Hey guys, Cliff Gray here with Flat Tops Wilderness Guides and True Hunts. Today I'm making you guys a video that shows you how to prep for pack in hunts. This is going to particularly ap apply to my drop camp hunts. It's just going to show you what I call like the, the routine prep for prepping all your meals ahead of time. Some overarching strategy that I always uh, explain to guys is whenever you're packing in for an elk hunt or whatever and you're packing into a wall tent camp, you can eat normal food, but you don't want to prep it normally, right? So you can see here, like I have the ingredients for two meals that I would recommend. I've got, I've got New York's uh, mashed potatoes and asparagus as one meal, and then I've got an easy beef stew and rolls as a second uh, dinner, right? So this is what it looks like with all the ingredients. Pretty simple, but still honestly a kind of a pain in the ass, you know. And on these elk hunts in the wilderness, you're gonna be hunt, you're gonna be out hunting before it gets light in the morning, and you're gonna be back after dark, right? Because your prime times are right there at shooting light. So, <clears throat> because of that, the last thing you want to do is after elk hunting all day, come home and have to mash potatoes, skin potatoes, mix them up, and do all that, season your steaks, make your stew. All of that, these are super simple meals, but when you're exhausted, at elevation, you've been hunting hard all the time, all, all day, that's kind of the last thing you want to do. So I'm going to show you the process to simplify everything and still make great meals, basically still from scratch for the most part, that are really easy to, to, to get warm in the field and cook in a wall tent setup. First, I'll show you that prep, all that I do, and all you need, outside of obviously the ingredients, is all you need is just vacuum bags and a vacuum sealer. I like these food savers, very consistent. They seem to be very durable and easy to use. So that's all you're gonna need for this process. All right, so you guys are gonna prep your meals each day uh, beforehand. That's how we do it. And all of this is, uh, the way we've kind of perfected this system is over the years we actually provide a drop camp food service for all of our drop camp hunters. So we've figured out you know what meals work best and what what features your or what aspects of the meal to prep beforehand for the guys in the drop camps and you so you basically have two types of meals right you've got meals where your entree is pretty easy to cook right like steaks those are pretty easy to cook in the field like you just got to put them on a griddle or put them on a on a, a grill on the fire right so that's easy prep that's just like heating up any other meal so on a meal like steaks and mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes are going to be completely prepped so we don't have to do anything there. And then the steaks, all on those I'm not going to pre-cook them. All I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to pre, uh, spi uh, put all the spices on them, right? So your salt and pepper, all of that, I'm actually going to vacuum pack them that way but they're still going to be raw. And then we're going to cook them on the grill or griddle in the camp. The mashed potatoes, those will be pre-cooked. So all they're gonna do, you'll see, is in the camp stove, we just, gotta, we just gotta put them in the water. And then your vegetables like asparagus, I just bring these in fresh, okay? So that, that in terms of like a pack-in, uh, you know, wall tent type of hunt in the wilderness, that's gonna be a meal that takes a little more prep. Um, and that's one kind of category we do. The other category is, this beef stew, right? I'm gonna brown the beef here at the, at the house well before the hunt, spice it all up, pre-cook it. I'm gonna put it with the, uh, all the seasoning. We're gonna put it in a slow cooker. We're gonna get that beef stew cooked perfectly, and then we're gonna vacuum pack it, all right? So it's gonna be completely cooked, and that meal is gonna be a little bit easier to cook in the field than this, but not, there's not that much difference. Um, but all you're gonna have to do on that is just drop the bag of beef stew um, in, you know, into your pot on your camp stove and you'll be, you'll be ready to eat in a few minutes. Basically just warming it up, right? And then the rolls, of course, you can just buy fresh and, and pack them beforehand uh, with you. All right, so those are the two categories of meals that you're generally gonna see. All right, guys, so here's some steaks that I'm gonna package for, for a night of hunts. I'm just gonna season them up really well, however you guys like them. And then I'm gonna vacuum pack them and one of the keys is whenever you vacuum pack them, don't, don't, vac, don't uh, fill your, your packs like overly full because you want, you want your packs to lay nice and flat. And that kind of goes to my cooler video if you want to watch that on you know, how to manage coolers in a wilderness camp or whatever. You want these steaks and all the other uh, food that you prep, you want it to lay flat in those coolers so you're not having to dig around in the cooler and lose all that uh, 
uh, all that uh, nice cool cool temps that are in there keeping your food nice and fresh all right so I've just spiced them up like I said however you want and I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in this bag here just like that and then you know another thing you can do uh, when you do this is you can always take <clears throat> And you can, uh, you can smoke these a little bit too. I've, I've had cooks in the past that did that when they were prepping meals for you know, our big wilderness uh, guided hunts that are out of camps. You know, one of the things you can do with these raw steaks before you vacuum pack them and freeze them is you can smoke them a little bit and add some flavor that way in addition to the seasoning. So that's kind of a, a good, way to, good way to do it, all right? I'm kind of working at a different venue for these videos because we got uh, evacuated from the lodge due to a wildfire. So uh, this, uh, I figured I'd just take some, uh, some of the free time here uh, because of that to, to do this video. But you guys have to bear with me. It's a little bit tighter, tighter quarters. All right. So there's your steaks, your seasoned steaks. Okay. So there's that. Now I'm just going to... I'm going to stick the video on here and I'll give you kind of like a time lapse of prepping all the other stuff, but I'm sure you guys have seen mashed potatoes and all that cooked, so I don't need to go through that. But I'll swing back over here to the food saver and I'll show you how I, uh, I uh, vacuum pack up those, those meals, right? Because um, they are a little bit different than, than raw meat, okay? All right, so me and Amy and Wyatt, well, he's kind of helping. We're uh, getting through these potatoes. And while I do this, it amazes me that anybody would think they'd want to do this after a long day of hunting. But every year uh, when we're packing in drop camp hunters, I pack in probably five bags of raw potatoes. So this kind of just gives you a good idea of the time that you're saving by doing this prep at your house. Hey, where's the mashed potatoes? Mashed potatoes. Are they good? Yeah. All right, so in dense foods like mashed potatoes here, one of the tricks that I find that's going to help you a lot for preheating them when you're in, or for reheating them when you're in camp, is make sure when you put them in these uh, vacuum bags, don't put, make them so they're really thick, right? You really want to actually just do like a, like a kind of a thin layer, probably about like, you know, an inch and a half at max. Inch is probably best and then lay it flat in your freezer when you freeze it. So what you're going to end up is you're going to end up with generally a longer bag than you think you would for the amount of mashed potato you want to put in there, all right? So that's generally going to be enough for, uh, you know, four guys, five guys. And then, as I said, what you want to do is just kind of mash it down here. Because it's dense, the other foods, when you lay them flat in your freezer, they're going to freeze like that, so you don't have, you know, they don't get real thick, but potatoes, because they're pretty dense, if you don't actually push it down before you vacuum pack it, you run into problems and they'll end up too thick. All right, so that's just a little tip on foods like that. All right, guys, so another little tip on any of like, you know, these pre-mixes that you're gonna do like for gravy or sauces or anything, why it's got some commentary. Um, they're pretty simple to make, obviously. These are like a one or two step process but you're still better off just prepping them beforehand so you don't have to deal with it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna prep this gravy mix for our mashed potatoes uh, that's gonna go with our steaks. And uh, well, we're just gonna prep it and then we're gonna vacuum bag it real quick so we can just drop that vacuum bag in warm water and heat it up when we're in our wall tank camp. All right, Wyatt, say bye. All right, guys, so on the sauces like gravy and stuff, you're just going to have to deal with the background noise because Wyatt's playing with the uh, vacuum packer. But anyways, on the, uh, the um, sauces, gravies, that sort of thing for your meals, I like to use these, these like half width food saver bags. And the reason is, is once you've put the, the sauce in here and you've sealed it up, when you go to heat your other meals, usually like a normal stock pot, you can actually stick like your entree in there and the sauce next to it as you heat heat the item up. If you use the full size bags, it's hard to get two of those bags inside a stock pot. So this is what I prefer. So it's pretty basic. Just fill up your serving size in the, in the, in the bag and then seal it up with your food saver. So in hunting camps, I really like these type of meals, like a beef stew or something, because 
kind of all your your whole meal is all there together, right? Your veggies and your protein and your fat. Uh, one recommendation, and I, and I kind of mean this in all seriousness, generally when you're making a stew for a hunting camp, double up the meat, if not two and a half times it. And usually guys are a lot happier with that, right? They're kind of craving that protein and that energy after a long day of hunting. So I always kind of double the amount of meat you got in there and your camp's gonna be a lot happier, all right? So here, here's all the ingredients to my beef stew. Just gonna put a little pepper and salt on it. And then I'm gonna brown the meat um, and put it in a slow cooker and just cook it like I would any other beef stew. And, uh, and then we'll vacuum pack it up and that'll be a meal for for your elk camp. All right, so the best way to package up these stews or anything else that's like a slow cooker type of meal, like meal like pulled pork or anything like that, is just, just directly from the slow cooker here after it's had a little time to cool off. Like I mentioned with the mashed potatoes, you can pack it up and it's still a little warm. Um, just go ahead and just do your servings in your vacuum bag. And then what you're gonna find is there's a, there'll be like a dry and wet setting on your, on your vacuum packer. On these stews, what you wanna do is use the moist setting uh, so it doesn't pull as much suction on there and pull a bunch of the liquid into the machine. Um, but even at that rate, what you have to do is you gotta kinda keep the stew underneath the vacuum packer so you don't have it at the level with it. If you still have it at the level with it, it'll pull enough even on the moist setting to pull a bunch of that liquid in. So just make sure you're kinda holding it down below so it can pull the air out without, uh, without pulling out the moisture. And then just make sure, particularly on stews, just like the other meals, make sure they're flat when you lay them in your freezer uh, so you don't end up with a big bunched up bag like this. Those are, those are gonna be harder to pack in your cooler. So that's the basics of it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, what all those meals look like when they're prepped. And then the next part of the video, I'll, uh, I'll show you uh, how to actually prep them in a wall, wall tent camp kitchen type of setup. All right guys, so this is what your finished product looks like after you've prepped the meals that I started with. And this can just, you know, I'll, I'll show you real quick what it looked like beforehand. So all those raw ingredients we had are now uh, simplified into the actual meals and you can see they're prepped real nice so they're flat, they'll fit well in coolers. So it's a lot simpler to pack. You've got less weight because you don't have the package and you don't have any extra ingredient that you're not going to use. You've got it all simplified. And then the actual time that you're going to spend in camp is probably going to be about 10% of what it would be prepping meals if you started from actual scratch in the camp. So this is the ideal way to do it. Here you've got a, a steak meal that's steak, mashed potatoes, gravy, and asparagus. Here you've got a, a, a nice hearty beef stew with rolls. And those are two great mountain meals. You're not really given, you're giving up very little, I should say, in terms of food quality to prep this way. It's still primarily from scratch and it's great meals. And you can see how well it's gonna pack down. Basically, putting this in a cooler, it's gonna look like this. And that's a meal for, for four to five guys. This here is probably a meal for more like four guys, but still you can see that's two of your meals right there. So you can see how in a 48 quart cooler, for five or six uh, guys, it'd be very easy to pack uh, six or seven days of meals for a wilderness uh, camp if you do it this way. You don't have a lot of waste and it simplifies your life a lot. All right guys, so now we're gonna go over some tips and tricks on how to get these meals heated up on your camp stove. So just as, a, just as an example, this is the type of stove that's usually in our drop camps. This is just a simple Coleman uh, camp stove. It's got two burners. Some of our camps have camp chefs in them, and those are a little bit nicer stove. They're a little bit larger, but they use a lot more propane. They put off a lot more, uh, a lo a lot more carbon monoxide too, so you gotta be careful with those. Just as a cautionary thing, wall tents aren't sealed up, but you know, there's, you know, there's room under the, the flap and that sort of thing. I tell guys still, just for your own health, and also just so you don't kind of get run down by consuming the carbon monoxide, make sure you got your, your wall tent door open whenever you're cooking. Okay, so there's gonna be uh, a stock pot of this size in your camp, and then there's gonna be some saucepans like this. So just a couple uh, uh, things right off the bat. All right, so the first tip I'll tell you guys is you don't wanna take these, uh, these food saver um, sealed up meals right out of the cooler and then go to, pre and go to heat them on the stove, right? What you wanna do is you want them to be partially thawed. So most of your hunting seasons, 
that means what you're going to do is you're going to pull them out in the morning whenever you're having breakfast or whatever, pull out the meal for that day, set it in the wall tent on the, on the table, and let it partially thaw out throughout the day, okay? In the later seasons, when your daytime temperatures are actually below freezing, it's obviously in, in some scenarios not going to benefit you by taking the meal out and setting it out because it's not going to it's not going to thaw in those sub freezing temperatures but a lot of times guys are in and out of the camp they're running the wood stove so it'll still it'll still partially thaw the meals and that works the other thing if you, if everybody in the camp is just not using the tents very much and they're not using the wood stove during the day but they are at night you can actually take the meal out the night before or you know sometime early in the morning before breakfast and you'll still get some of uh, some of the meal thawed before you go to, to cook it in the afternoon. You don't necessarily want it completely thawed, particularly in archery season. You don't want the meal to get completely thawed and sit there warm in your tent all day because there's the obvious you know, uh, bacterial growth and that sort of thing you have to be careful of. You basically just want it like this where it's just partially thawed out. That's going to make it a lot easier to heat up in this process. All right. So for this, for, for this run through guys, I'm actually combining parts of the two meals I showed you that we prepped early, just so you see you know, how, how I deal with like sauces and that sort of thing versus entrees. So I've got the beef stew we made, and I got the mashed potatoes, and then I've got the gravy, okay, in this small bag. And so first thing I'm gonna show you is right now, I've got these, these two, uh, um, uh, the stock pot and the saucepan, the water is at a rolling boil in them, all right? So you don't want to put these into a rolling boil. What you want to do is get, get the, the water rolling on your, um, on your camp stove. Give it four to five minutes so the water's sterilized. In this process, you don't have to use sterilized water to start out, right? You can use non-sterilized water and the boiling will sterilize it. Let, it. let it run at a rolling boil for four or five minutes and realize that you're going to be at a much higher altitude than you're used to, so the boiling of water is going to take a lot of time. All right, so you have to consider that. But let it go to a rolling boil, and then what I do is I'll actually just turn down really, really low the burner, and I'll get those, I'll, I'll let those drop down to like a simmer, okay? And you almost want it, you know, somewhere just slightly below a simmer when you put these in there, and your bags will hold up a lot better, and the, the meal will actually heat uh, more thoroughly through it, right? It won't, you, if you just drop it in there, you know, in a rolling boil, there's a lot of movement and I've actually, these bags can actually pop if there's extreme temperature difference. So what you want to do is just get it simmering, maybe slightly bo below simmering, and then just set your, your meals in there and I'll show you that. Okay, you can just set them in there. Softly, don't be rough with the bags. They're pretty sturdy, but you still want to be, you know, consider <clears throat> consider that they can pop. If for some reason you take a meal out and it's popped, what you can do, of course, you can actually just use your saucepan. You can put the meal in there if it's thawed enough and cook it that way. Now you've got a pan that you've got to clean, but that is an outside option if you realize that the meal is popped right or the bag. It's pretty rare, um, but. If, and that's kind of a tip for you guys who are doing this on your end, don't chintz on the bags. Don't use like Cheapo Charlie, you know, best deal ever budget uh, vacuum bags. Use the branded bags or bags that are pretty well respected and well reviewed. And you want the ones that are BPA free just because you are heating food in them. And you want the ones that are microwave safe, all right, because you, again, you are heating, heating food in them. Or you can get the ones, a lot of times their brand is like sous vide. Uh, compatible which is basically the type of cooking that we're doing <clears throat> we're just warming up but but all those bags will work don't use cheap bags because they might melt in terms of the um, they might melt or they could just break um, in terms of the bags we use we use you know the branded su uh, food saver bags and other good bags that aren't going to do that but they can break particularly if you're if you're tossing around the food a lot in the cooler right and you get a lot of friction on these and you're going to know because obviously on something that's got liquid in it, you're going to see the leak. But on <clears throat> other items that aren't liquid, a lot of times you'll just see that the bag has kind of decompressed and there's air in there. Like on mashed potatoes, you're going to be able to see that. You're going to see that now there's air. And that means that, that bag is broken. Don't put those bags in the water or, of course, the water's going to get in there and destroy the meal. All right? So you can do 
pretty much as much as you can fit. It's just going to, like anything, it's going to take a little bit of extra time for it to warm up. All right. And then I like to do, you know, the gravies and sauces, generally if you pull them out at the same time as the entrees, they're going to thaw where they're almost completely thawed. Like this gravy's just got a few little ice chunks. A lot of times with these, just because they're easier to serve uh, out of the actual saucepan, I'll just pour it in there, use a, use a spoon uh, or a ladle to, to warm it just like you would at home. No big deal. But in this case, I'll just show you if you want to be you know, real careful about how many how many dishes you have after after um, dinner. You can for sure just heat them up like this in the bag, and you can actually just cut a corner of that bag and and use the food that way. All right. So the best way to do this is what I'm doing right now, guys. Just be patient about it. Right. It's it may take a while, um, and what you can do is you can you can really softly use a uh, one of the spoons or serving spoons that's in the camp, and you can just feel and make sure all that ice is melted. And it's, it really consistently does heat the, heat the, the food up uh, thoroughly throughout the, the food. You don't really get like a microwave heat up. As long as you do it slowly, you won't have any problems. And that's basically the process. All right, so on to serving these, uh, these type of meals. Like what I'll do is if you want to be really minimalistic about it, you can actually just serve them out of the bowls that you heated it in. But what I recommend is grab the bag and get rid of the water just in case you know, your bag tips over, something happens. You don't lose all the food and it's not, you all don't all of a sudden have super runny mashed potatoes because you've added four cups of, of, of uh, post boiled water or whatever. So get rid of the water out of these, just pour that out. And then you can actually just serve it right from here. Everybody can grab their plate. They can get the mashed potatoes out of the bag they want, you know, with the serving utensils and get the stew uh, out of the out of the bag they want and that'll work out the other way you can do it I'll show you I'm actually going to feed this meal uh, to my family here tonight um, I just on the sauces I like to just cut the corner out of them there and then I can put that like in a cup that'll work out like that where it's not going anywhere so that's the gravy and then the other meals like my mashed potatoes here I'll just cut the entire top. And when you do your last checks to make sure they're done, you want to actually get a good feel for it and make sure everything's heated up. So instead of just you know making sure there's no ice, the best way to do is actually just pull this up above the water and just feel that with your hands and you'll know that uh, everything is ready. You'll be surprised how, how uh, um, consistent it does warm up food if you use this method so you can just drop these into serving dishes like this get rid of your bags I'm trying to have to reach here a little bit and this could be kind of a sensitive operation you want to be the guy that in hunting camp drops the dinner for five guys. So all right guys, so that's a simple way to prep and serve meals uh, in, in in a wall tent camp. It's what we do in our drop camps, but also applies to any of you guys that are planning on, you know, doing camps uh, that you're driving into or whatever, where you've got a pretty good setup. You can have a stove like this. You can prep all your meals beforehand. You can focus on hunting, and you can, as you can see, you've got limited prep in the camp, um, and it's easy to put put it together and and have some good uh, meals while you're out there. So I hope it helps you.